I like this museum a lot. I learnt some interesting things. For example, the Irish tinkers, or tinsmiths, are not the same people as the Romany gypsies. It's just that the tinkers copied the Romany gypsy caravan design, and they used these caravans to live in when they got turfed off their land by horrible landlords. You know, the English. Entire families lived in these caravans, which I suppose wasn't too bad as long as you had a little dad. This is a Sheila. There are dozens of these in Ireland. Nobody's sure what they signify, but they're always female and they're always having a fiddle. Sometimes they're pulling horrible faces. If you want to know more, well, don't ask me. Ask Google. And when you've had enough of caravans and Sheilas, have a look at the local castle. These very beautiful cliffs are where many people come to commit suicide. But because the Catholic Church doesn't like the idea of Catholics committing suicide, most of the deaths get recorded as accidental. If there was any justice in the world, this place would be famous for three things. One is its fantastic peat, which is utterly fantastic. The second thing is this is where Marconi made the first ever transatlantic wireless broadcast from. And the third thing is this is where Alcock and Brown landed. Well there we are, there's Alcock and there's Brown. Which one's which? I don't know, but they were the first men to cross the Atlantic in an aeroplane. That was in 1919. Here's their plane. When they were coming in for a landing, they thought they were somewhere else. They thought they were near Galway and were most surprised to find that landing in a peat bog isn't easy. Plane went nose first down. Nobody was seriously hurt, so no problem really. Oh, and they did get £10,000 from the Daily Mail for their trouble, which is about £1.3 million today. Lucky blighters. And here is a monument that was set up to their memory in Right. Whoever puts this last one in place, they will die.